Welcome back. Once again, adventurers, so let's play Chaos Head. And in the last episode, Takumi was so shaken by the return of Shogun that he had inadvertently imagined knocking, pounding, and scratching all over the shipping container that is his home and his base on top of the Kurunai building. Utterly helpless, Takumi decided to venture off to school in search of the one salvation that he could think of, Rimi Sakihata, who hadn't answered her phone. Yet, uh, it was none other than Daisuke Mizumi that uh, Takumi encountered, with a very sad and perplexed look on his face. Of course, it wasn't long before Takumi figured out why. Crowds of students were gathered around the building of Suomei Academy, looking up at, the, at a single point at which stood Ayase Kishimoto, aka Fez, who was prepared to sever his ties with her world to uh, serve the great will against the might of Glagiol. At least that's how reality is to her. But in any event, she was prepared to sever her ties by jumping down. Um, get rid of that. Oh God. Of all the times to, uh, of all the times to record, that uh, should not have happened. But uh, never mind that. These things happen during Let's Plays, unfortunately much as I wish they didn't. In any event, uh, Ayase's end was all but certain, or so it seemed, because there was nothing but a slab of concrete below where she fell, except that at the eleventh hour Takumi had wished for a flower bed, and lo and behold, a flower bed appeared, right where Ayase fell. Which is different from previous phenomena with Rimi and Ayase themselves regarding delusions. Because normally delusions disappeared after a while. In fact, delusions were never physical to begin with. Yet Ayase landed on a flower bed that was clearly not there before. But of course, uh, this prolonged prologue is uh, diverting me for the attention at hand, which is, of course, the fact that th these three individuals over at Nozomi are uh, contemplating the events that they themselves have orchestrated. And, of course, notwithstanding, uh, I think they all have a god complex, if you're Pardon my saying. Of course, uh, I think even this uh, old man on the uh, right hand side here um, is a bit surprised by uh, how many people have died. Although, uh, I don't think that's a uh, concern to the victims. I think that person speaking was the uh, short-haired man in the uh, suit on the over at the other desk. Yeah. And the third man standing perfectly in the middle of the room. A man who might actually be the most dangerous of them all. Again, my point is always being proven in these matters. Your concern is touching there, good sir. Of 
course, it's uh, probably safe to say that the true puppet master of this entire ordeal is this man standing in the middle of the room. And the old man in the robes and the other man in the black suit are merely collaborators. Control according to whom, I wonder. And can it be said that you are truly in control of the situation? Again, my previous point stands. Regardless, we might finally find some answers. ゴーインな勧誘活動を告発されるおそれもなくなるでしょう。我々が日本いや、世界を変える日も時期に。ああ。There is something that we haven't heard or seen in a long time. The 300 man committee, and though I can't currently look at the uh, tips here in Chaos Head, that is not unknown to me. For the 300 man committee is actually known as the committee of 300. Believe it or not, adventurers, if you've been following my Let's Plays uh, over the past two years, you might have heard of them, as I have. Of course, for those of you who haven't, allow me to explain. In the world of Steinsgate, or rather, the Alpha world line of Steinsgate, it was a group called the Committee of 300. Who are the Committee of 300? Well, the pullers of the strings of the international research organization CERN, who were developing secretive time travel technology that they hadn't quite perfected, but they had managed to use it to create a dystopian future in 2036. A dystopian future that Suzaha Mane from the Alpha World Line was determined to stop. However, in the beta world line of Steinsgate Zero, the Committee of 300 did not have an active role in world line convergence. Instead, their role in the grand scheme of things had been replaced by Russia, not to mention a pair of American organizations, Stratfor and uh, Derpa. I almost forgot the name there. But suffice it to say, the Committee of 300 are 300 individuals who are wrapped in a grand global conspiracy for, or rather against, mankind. Interesting. So the Committee of 300 are involved with Nozomi. So they don't just control CERN. And these uh, three people are acting against the committee's wishes. But uh, the events of Steinsgate and Steinsgate Zero do not apply at this uh, particular juncture. <laughs> You still have the issue of new gen to contend with. I doubt these people are uh, interested in time travel. That talk of the second generation. 
お二人にも満足していただける仕上がりですよノア2はねノア2 Unfortunately, we won't,、uh, we won't get to hear that yet. I ran from school to the park with all my might, stopping only when I'd lost my breath completely. My lungs furiously sought oxygen. As I wheezed, I took a swift look about the park. There were absolutely no human figures around. Not Rimi, not Yua, just Takumi. I didn't catch sight of the personage I,、uh, personages I dreaded, Shogun and Yua. Relieved, I began collecting my breath. It was close to evening. The sky gradually transformed from blue to the color of twilight. The usual quietness of this park made the previous uproar at school seem like a lie. That in incident had ended in a failed suicide attempt. An ambulance carried Ayase off. I had no way of knowing what happened to her afterward. At least she's okay. For now. After the stir, I gave up on searching for Rimi and ran away here. Should still try to find her, wherever she is. <laughs> Spectacle from before was indelibly seared into the back of my brain. At the time, as Ayase fell, I thought she could never be saved. But she lived. I still didn't know the details, but at least she hadn't died. She was breathing. She had few, if any, outer wounds. Under normal circumstances, she definitely would have died. She was miraculously saved. And what a miracle it was. Because she fell atop the soft earth of a flower bed. Convenient, that. Too convenient. But it was physically impossible for Ayase to have fallen on a flower bed. Because there had not been anything like a flower bed down there. Until the instant before I a s a y fell, that place had been the paved asphalt of a parking lot. Several teachers' cars were parked there. Despite that, why, in a single second, had a flower bed manifested? I think you know the answer to that question, Takumi. You've been researching it ever since you stumbled upon it. Had I done it? Well, you were the only one who th thought about a flower bed in that situation, so why not? Even in the midst of being upset about, over it, I'd envisioned that maybe there was a flower bed beneath her. But just because of that, could a split second delusion actually become reality? I think we have to accept the reality of the possibility. I wondered if I had some kind of special power, and I'd undergone the similar experience of witnessing my arse divide in two, but. If I do something as amazing as creating a flower bed instantaneously? I think you already know the answer to that question. You already have. Even though I didn't possess a D sword. Furthermore, that flower bed continued existing even after I a s a y fell. When teachers ran up to her, she lay there, the left footprints amid the flowers. Yeah, that delusion has ultimately become reality. The flowers blooming there. I thought they were the same as those planted in the courtyard flower beds, had their stems bent from being trodden on by the ambulance crew. In other words, physicality. And they were probably still in the same place even now. 
A delusion had become reality and stayed that way. Which definitely goes above and beyond the devices that uh, Vector Chondria developed. It hadn't ultimately disappeared, like Hayase's doppelganger. And everyone had accepted the Falau bed as if its presence there was perfectly normal. None of them had expressed any doubts about it. Now that is interesting. Could I seriously have done that? Oi! And there is another familiar voice. <laughs> A sharp voice called to me from behind. I should have known you would be among the crowd. Before I had a chance to turn around, a hand stretched out and seized the front of my shirt. Without my having a, any chance to struggle, I got shoved violently into the playground equipment. My back slammed powerfully against it and I moaned in pain. Lo and behold, it is uh, Sino Oi. Not necessarily under the friendliest of circumstances, unfortunately. And she seems to be demanding something of uh, Takami Nishijo. And, uh,. I'm actually going to cut this episode short here, adventurers, and when we return, we shall see exactly where uh, Senna's line of questioning will lead. Though I have a uh, relatively, relatively good idea as to where it might actually lead, given Takami's uh, current circumstances. But as always, adventurers. Until next we meet.